Welcome to the Center for Contemporary Mysticism in Philadelphia. My name is Joe Irwin, and it's a real pleasure to bring you another one of our programs. We have a great program lined up for you today, which I'll introduce in a couple of minutes. But I always like to begin by welcoming back friends that are new and old. The Center's been around for about eight years now, and we have some folks who've been with us from the beginning, but there are others that are new friends. It seems like every month through our website or social media, we make new friends who find us. So we want to especially welcome you to the Center family. I'll mention that we have a website with lots of videos, hundreds of videos and uh, other resources, and there are groups in which you can participate. We have weekly mindful meditation, which is now all online, uh, weekly uh, spiritual readers group. We have a monthly spiritual sharing circle that many people enjoy, a monthly non-duality discussion group, and many resources. So we would encourage you to feel free to check out the website. It's simply contemporarymysticism.org. Also, I'll mention that uh, we're not just talking heads, but we're a real contemplative community or family, so we want to be with you and assure you that no one really walks alone. If there's any way we can help you, if you're going through a difficult time and would like to let us know, we will certainly include you in our prayers and our thoughts and hold you in the light. So we work hard to create a true sense of family. The last thing before we get to our program I'll mention is that the center is a completely member-supported enterprise. So if you think what we're doing is important and would like to drop something in our collection basket, you're welcome to do so. Obviously, not meeting in person, we can't put our collection basket out uh, on the table the way we used to. But if you go to our website, contemporarymysticism.org, you'll see a collection basket there, our virtual collection basket. So donations are not in any way required. Everything we do is free and open to the public. But if you do think what we're doing is important and would like to be a part of supporting it, we are grateful for your support. Today, uh, we want to welcome back to the center Sebastian Blacksley. Sebastian was at the center about um, three years ago. We had a wonderful program uh, we had a wonderful program with Mari Perone about A Course of Love, and also uh, we had uh, John Mundy there talking about A Course in Miracles, and Sebastian came up from um, came up from Argentina to be with us in person, and we had a chance to meet and get acquainted, and I think uh, for us it was love at first sight, <laughs> and we were so grateful to get to know Sebastian. You probably know from some of the work that um, he was doing, uh, some of the biography you've read about him, he, he began receiving messages from a very early age, about six years of age, I think, from a voice he identified as that of Christ, and it continued throughout his life. Now, he went on to have a career in international business, but eventually came back to Argentina and uh, in 2016, he had a miraculous discovery of A Course of Love, and uh, he was so moved that he felt called to do what he could to bring A Course of Love to the Spanish-speaking world, which he's worked to do through a foundation. You may hear a little more about that later on, but he's continued to receive and transcribe messages from Christ and from Mother Mary, and it's resulted in a wonderful series of books called Choose Only Love, and so... Um, that's something we'll talk about, too, and we're looking forward to learning more about that. But I think as much as anything, I just uh, so am so um, connected in, in Sebastian and who he is and his work together. I feel Sebastian is a real personification of love's presence, and I feel that way when I'm around him in person, and I think you will, too, after you spent time with him. So, Sebastian, it's a joy to welcome you. We will also be welcoming our own Patricia Pierce. As you know, she's a former pastor, a writer, a spiritual teacher, but one who's been dedicating her life recently to supporting those who desire to participate in the global awakening that's taking place today. So Patricia will lead our interview and discussion with Sebastian. And uh, after that, we'll have a Q&A. There will be a time for you to ask questions, offer comments, and dialogue one-on-one -on -one with Sebastian after our initial time of discussion together. So, 
As you're uh, listening to Patricia and Sebastian talk, if you have a question, a thought, a comment, be sure and jot it down because after a bit, we will open it up and ask participants to raise your hand if you have a question or would like to offer something in dialogue with Sebastian. So that's the program for today. We've been greatly looking forward to this. So at this point, uh, Patricia, I will uh, turn it over to you and you and Sebastian can begin your dialogue. Thank you, Joe. Uh Thank you, Joe. Sebastian, thank you. I just wanted to echo Joe's thanks to you for being with us all the way from uh, Buenos Aires. So it's great to have you here. And I've been looking forward to our conversation. Joe gave, gave a little bit of your background that you have had this spiritual connection, this deep spiritual connection from early childhood. And that has continued with you throughout your life. And even as you were working in business, you still felt that connection. And then something prompted you to leave that career and really devote yourself to bringing forth what you've been receiving. So I'm just curious what it was that prompted you to make that move and to really give yourself fully to the calling in a new way. Thank you, Patricia, for um, this heavenly time, this dialogue. I, I really feel happy to be here with you and with everyone. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to share what I received from heaven for the goodness of everyone. And going to your question, since I have memories, I feel and receive the presence of Jesus and Mary in my life. So I grew up with the understanding and the belief that this was something that happened to everyone. So I I never thought that this was something, um, you know, with which I have to do something. That was just part of my life. And because I received the divine love from Jesus and Mary, our Immaculate Mother, I walked through all of my life with them. So I asked them every time what I have to do or what I don't have to do or what decisions to make. As real father and mother, I believe and I feel they are my father and mother. And that's the feeling that I always have. At the age of 16 years old, I wanted to become a monk, to go to a monastery, because everything that was related to Jesus and Mary was so important for me, and that resonates in my heart. So I wanted to dedicate my life just for them. And... But my family didn't want to do, me to do that. And I wanted to respect my parents' decision because I felt that that was part of the will of God for me. So Jesus told me a um, couple of days after uh, I had this conversation with my parents and they said no. Um, Jesus said to me that he wanted me to be in the world without being off the world. And that was my, I would say, kind of mission for me, not to to be a monk and to live in the world without being off the world. So there was a time in which that was very difficult for me because it was difficult for me to keep the right balance between being just dedicated to my love, which is Jesus and Mary, and being, you know, dealing with our daily life in the world. Um, I did my best, and I kept my relationship with Jesus and Mary every day in my life using the devotion, so praying or 
any kind of practice and I try to share uh, or and to join, I'm sorry, um, groups that uh, were connected with um, with God in, in, in different ways. So even though I was uh, working in, in international corporations and having a very, very um, challenging international career in, in business, I took time of my day every day to be alone with Jesus and Mary every day. But there was a moment in which I felt my heart and my life like with a lack of integration, a lack of integrity, because somehow I started to feel like half of my life was for them, and half of my life was for the world, or something like that. That's the concept. So I felt like I was living in two ways, two different ways at the same time. So I could feel the separation. I could feel a conflict in my heart. And that conflict was with me until the moment um, that I joined a course of love, um, which was a few years ago. Because at that moment, a course of love came to me. And Jesus said to me that the, uh, the time had came to me in order to show the world my direct relationship with, with him. There was a turning point at that moment for me in the way of living my spirituality. Because after that moment, I realized that I had to dedicate all of my life to this and to share everything that I receive and the relationship that I have with Jesus and Mary um, with the world. And after that, I just left everything that I, um, or the few things that I was doing at that time, uh, which was not focused on Jesus and Mary, and I created the foundation as a, an instrument in order to uh, dedicate 100% of my life to this mission, which is showing the world and sharing with the world that there is a love that has no beginning or end, and that love comes from Christ, and that come is what we are. And once we understand that, everything changes in our life because we know who we are and we know our purpose in our, in our life and we can establish a sensitive relationship with heaven and we receive God as a, as a gift because of that knowledge. And then in 2018, you started receiving uh, what has now become this series of seven books. Not all of them have yet been published, but many, most of them have, which is uh, Choose Only Love. And that started coming to you in 2018. Could you share with us what that experience was like and you know, what, how, how that opened up for you? Thank you for asking that question as well. Um, in October um, 2018, that was um, October the 3rd, um, I was praying alone at home and suddenly I received the visitation of a presence full of love and beauty and with immense and deep peace. And that presence introduced himself as I am the medicine of God. And my soul knew uh, perfectly well that that was Archangel Raphael. And he said to me that he wanted me to pray a specific prayer during nine days, a novena. And he gave me the intentions of that uh, prayer. 
And I did that during nine days without uh, asking anything. I just did what I was asked to be done. And in October 13th, which means nine days after that, uh, the first visitation, I started to receive suddenly um, the visitation of uncountable core of angels that came to me singing a song of gratitude to God the Creator for giving us existence. It is the song of gratitude that angels sing constantly and eternally in their hearts and is part of the celestial music of the gratitude of the creation for giving us existence because God the Father or God the our Creator has given us the existence because he wants us to exist. And there is a music, there is a song in the creation uh, which is constantly expressing this gratitude for giving us existence and for living in, in his heart. That music is given to me and within that music comes to me the voice of Christ. That voice comes with music and symbols celestial symbols which are not uh, able to be um, understood with human words, but uh, my soul is able to understand the meaning of those symbols. And within those symbols and that celestial music, which is the voice of Christ, comes to me one specific message, which then is the chapter, one chapter of, of the book. After receiving that, the Court of Angels returns back to, to heaven and Archangel Raphael remains with me and also comes to me, Archangel Gabriel. And Archangel Raphael is in charge of translating those symbols and music into human words. And he dictated the takes me the words to be reading in Spanish and then in English. And then he asked me to um, record that in Spanish. And that's what I do. And those writings um, are what you mentioned before, choose only love. Um, I received 144 visitations um, in the way I mentioned before. And each of them, is one chapter. So there are seven books with 21 chapters per book and less chapters in, in, the, in, in the last book. So there are 144 chapters with messages for all of us for this moment of humankind. So these, these visitations involve you receiving um, these symbols and it happens in an in an instant right the uh, in an instant these symbols come that are beyond human rational understanding and then later they are given voice they are given words and you are guided through that process as well and i find it really fascinating how how these visitations they come first in symbols that are beyond our human capacity to understand. But then there's this very gracious and tender process of transmitting them in, in words, in ways that we can begin to comprehend as humans. And I want to just read something from, this is from the opening of the first book. And it says, the main message of this work is that the time for a new humanity has arrived. Humanity is ready to manifest the living Christ in each of us. We are, each of us, Christ. This is the truth, even if we perceive ourselves differently. We are now prepared to live life in this certainty. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. 
helping us to realize this truth in our lives here and now is the aim of this manifestation. All of heaven will help us in this holy purpose since it is the second coming itself. And I would love to hear you reflect on, I think I'm sure that a lot of us on this call today can resonate with those words and that we are in this very pivotal global moment of transition when we are beginning to awaken to the truth of ourselves. And I would love to hear you, Sebastian, reflect on what the second coming means to you. Thanks for, for that question, Patricia, um, for bringing this to this dialogue, um, because this is the essence of what I receive. And the second coming, um, which is also quite well developed in, in Choose Only Lab, is the reality of the new earthly kingdom in which we are the true and clear expression of Christ. I will talk just based on what I receive. And based on that, the whole creation, including ourselves, is created to be one with Christ. Because that's the essence of what we are. When we say Christ is the real essence of our creation, um, our holy being, our um, real essence and real being. But it's not just about us as human beings. It's just about everything. Every animal, every tree, every flower, everything is the manifestation of the beauty of Christ and the holiness of Christ. And to make that real is where the creation is going. And there is a process in this creation, in this realm of time and space. And now we are in the last, I would say that we are in the last step of this process. We are now ready to start showing that truth more and more every day. So we are truly and literally speaking a new humanity. Human beings are not the same, even though we have the same appearance than before. We personally are becoming a new being and the whole creation is also becoming a new creation because love is making everything new every time. And love is transforming everything, including ourselves, into Christ, into love. When we say Christ, we say love. When we say Christ, we say the truth. And that is what we are um, able to reflect now. So the second coming is the realization of the Christ in us and in everything that is created. And Christ is being manifested in every, every aspect of the creation, including ourselves. That is the second coming. You know, I'm, I'm aware, Sebastian, that today is Pentecost Sunday in the Christian tradition, which is the day that recognizes that the, the outpouring of spirit on all, on, you know, on, on, on humanity. And I feel as though we are in that moment globally when we are having that experience. And you, of course, have had it since you were a child, not knowing that other people, <laughs> that this was not their common experience. And at some point you came to realize that, oh, not everyone is experiencing this the way I am. I also want to bring forth that, um, that this Christness transcends any sort of religious um, uh, compartmentalization and that in your visitations, you would sometimes receive wisdom from, as you mentioned in the book, uh, 
from the from Rumi, from Sufi wisdom from Rumi, and wisdom from the Bhagavad Gita, and that you were being given to understand that there is that there is one wisdom, that there is one mind, that there is one love. Can you say a little bit more about what that was like for you as you were receiving these this information from traditions that you were not familiar with? Was that was that an eye opener for you? Yes, um, something that I learned um, from my spiritual path, um, I mean, and from Jesus and Mary, is that they were allowing me to be more open and more open and more open. That's what Christ does in us. Jesus and Mary wants us to be open to forget about our beliefs, to forget about what we believe about what we are or about what they are or about everything that we think. He calls us to forget about everything so we can become empty. And in that emptiness, he can fulfill that is space with divine wisdom and perfect love. So as, as much as we become empty of, what, of our interpretations, as much as we receive the wisdom from heaven, and in that wisdom, we know perfectly well that separation doesn't exist. So we start to change completely because love transforms us into the unity of the truth and we live in that unity and we can experience that unity and we know perfectly well not because of our mind but because of our heart that everything that was created is one is the same for God because God is just love and love has no something like differentiation in terms of separation. So something that um, I gained from Jesus and Mary was a, a, an open mind. An open mind that can understand perfectly well the true meaning of wisdom, the true meaning of love within the different ways of expressing that love or that wisdom. So you gain the capability or you regain the capability to go beyond the symbols and go beyond the limits to the truth that is behind. So once you have that capacity back to your heart, um you start to enjoy the diversity of the creation and you understand that God loves diversity. That's why there is so much diversity all over the world. And we start to love the diversity of the expression of love and wisdom. And we don't get lost on that diversity because we can see what is behind um, the differences. So I now enjoy the different ex way of expressing the same truth. And that is what I receive. I receive directly from the voice of Christ, the wisdom of the Sufi tradition, which I, I've never heard before. Um, and then I start to, to, um, to know more about that, to search about that. And I could find and enjoy the beauty of that, that expression, which is the same love. So um, we are in the time of union, in the time of unity, in a time in which we are called to go beyond differences to the Christ that is in everything. And just to finish this explanation, Jesus said once to me that he 
he came at this moment to remove all structures. That was the expression he used. And he, he wants to remove all structures in order for us to see him in our brothers and sisters. And that's what we are called. We are called to see Christ in everything and everyone because that's the truth. <laughs> you are Christ, Patricia, as I am, and everything is Christ. So that is the call, to see him everywhere, every time, in every moment, in every person, in every single being um, that is here in creation. And once we see him and we live connected to him, we don't see differences because we understand that we are all life being manifested in one way. Thank you, Sebastian. And as you speak of that, that to be able to see Christ in one another, I think oftentimes a lot of folks have the, the hardest thing for them is to see Christ within themselves and to accept that Christ nature within themselves. I think oftentimes we can exclude ourselves. Every, everything else can be Christ. Everything else can be love. <laughs> we still have a tendency to exclude ourselves exactly. from that universality of love. It's very interesting uh, that that uh, dynamic that that humans have participated in, and that also is is dissolving. And I really thank you for uh, making that comment because um, that was exactly what I realized um, at the beginning when Jesus said to me that it's a time in which. You have to live by the truth, which means that you are no longer living yourself, but it's me who is living in you. And I could see that we are more able to see Christ in others than in ourselves. Um, so our Immaculate Mother Mary gave me a very important message about this um, about how to do that, how to live our life as the, the Christ that we are. And she said to me, let yourself be loved. And she said that several times to me, let yourself be loved, let yourself be loved, and so on. And I realized when I started to live in that way, how difficult it is for us to let ourselves be loved because we are more accustomed to love others than just to accept the love for us. But our Immaculate Mother Mary said to me once that I was created to be loved, not even to love others because she said to me, because your brother is Christ. And Christ is God. What can you give to God? You cannot give anything to him because everything that you have comes from him. So you are created to be happy in the love of God. And to be happy in the love of God, you have to receive it, to accept it. And as much as you receive that love, as much as you will be transformed by that love. And that love is going to be extended by itself with you because you will realize that that love is what you are. And that brings us, Patricia, to the next step, which is the way of doing that is to love in ourselves. Once we love ourselves and we accept our humanity as it is, not trying to change anything in you, just to embrace in everything in a pure and perfect love as you are, then you become the Christ that you really are. So the problem is not about how I can be Christ, but the ideal thought and belief that we have about Christ. Christ is not someone who is 
perfectly behavior or um, who has uh, some kind of attitude or another attitude. Christ is who you are. And if you love everything that you are, your body, your mind, your conflicts, your fear, whatever you are, you are becoming one with your identity and with what you are. And that is the way of Christ to be able to manifest through you, just Mm -hmm. loving yourself and letting yourself be loved. Which is the title of the series, Choose Only Love. And that applies to ourselves and all of us, to choose only love. Before we uh, finish up, Sebastian, I want to just have you speak about um, the way of Mary and the time, the time of Mary, the time of Mary, because that is, I think, part of this allowing ourselves to be loved and say more about that, because that has been very active now in your own experience, Um, the presence of Mary and the return of the feminine and, um, and the time of Mary. Thank you, Patricia, very much for honoring our Immaculate Mother Mary to be present in this dialogue. Um, Immediately after receiving Choose Only Love, I received the visitation of our Immaculate Mother Mary telling me that I had to keep writing and I would receive um, another book whose title is From the Heart of Mary. So I received 100 uh, messages dictated by her directly to me. And that's part of what you mentioned before about uh, our Immaculate Mother Mary, her times. And based on the revelation that I received, we are in the times of Mary. Definitely, we are in the times of Mary. And this is these are the times of Mary. She is who makes Christ to born in us. She has the grace or the, the essence of being the divine mother. And the divine maternity means that she has the power and the mission of making Christ to born in the creation, which includes ourselves. So she is in charge of this process in humanity at this very moment. And everything is in, in, in her hands and in, in her uh, immaculate heart. So she is co-creating with us the new earthly kingdom for um Christ, in which Christ is going to to to, to be expressed and to to live and to born, so um, everything is based on our Immaculate Mother Mary. We 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 come from her because she's our mother. Um, she's our origin, uh, and she's walking with us. That's very important to know. She is literally walking with us, um, and she's going to be manifested more and more every day. That was what she said to me, because she wants us to know how close and how present she is in our life. And she asks us for one thing now, which is to trust in her with unlimited trust. This is what she is um, asking the humanity. She said once to me that in the past, She was asking for changing. Um, But now she's asking for trust. Everything is going to be all right because she is in charge of this. And she is our mother. And mothers are always taking care of the children. And she told me to live our life as a child in the arms of a mother. That's the way she wants us to live to give everything to her and everything will be all right. Thank you, Sebastian. I want to make sure that we leave ample time for questions. 
uh, from some of our uh, folks who are on the call. And I just, again, want to thank you from, from my heart for being with us today. It's been really an honor and a delight to be in this conversation with you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Same for me. So at this point, Joe will come back on to lead us in the question and answer. I'm going to turn off my video and um, we'll hear what folks want to know about. Thank, Thank you, you Sebastian and Patricia, for that wonderful, wonderful conversation. It is uh, magical, I think, when we begin to share this content and at this level. I, I do feel, in fact, that Christ and and Mary and others are present with us. So at this time, uh, we want to open it up and see who might have a question or a comment uh, for Sebastian so that you can uh, come online. We would say go ahead now and click the little button that says raise your hand, because if you don't do that, we don't know that you have a question or comment. We do ask that uh, you keep any questions or comments to about three three minutes so so others will have a have a chance to uh, participate. But uh, please, please raise your hand and please participate because that's that's what makes our programs and our times together, I think, so meaningful. We're not just hearing from one or two people, but as each each of you uh, over the 50 or 100 people that we have uh, participate, then it, it makes it a richer experience. So, uh, again, we will start um, having a few come on board. And uh, at this time, it looks like uh, we have, I think, uh, a question from George. George, we would ask you to come on. And um, let me see if we've got you on there. You have to turn on your, your video and your audio. There you go. And uh, unmute. And we'll let you have a question for Sebastian. Thank you, Sebastian. Uh, appreciate your presentation. Um, in many spiritual groups and even traditional religious groups, there's a process called discernment. Discernment. And uh, while everything seemed to be crystal clear for you, many times in my life, uh, I find that there's a lot of questions and decisions to make regarding the pathway. Do you have anything to say about that process of discernment? Thank you, George, for that topic, which is important. We are now called to the time of the heart. So every discernment in that path of the heart is made by your heart. So the call here is to follow after your heart, no matter where your heart brings you. That's the new discernment, which is a different discernment than using our thinking mind. And our Immaculate Mother Mary was very, very clear with me when she said, the problem you have is your interpretation. So that's why you have to abandon your thinking mind in order to go to your heart and to return to your heart and trust in your feelings, trust in your intuition, trust in what you feel, in what your heart is telling you so we can return to understand the language of love. And that is the right discernment, the discernment of our heart. So I would say, do whatever your heart calls you to do and you will always succeed. Thank you very much. We have a question uh, from uh, Paula. Uh, let, let me say, too, if you maybe don't want to uh, have your voice heard or your picture, you can submit a question on by clicking the Q&A button. 
If we have some questions coming in through Q&A, we'll be happy to pass those on to Sebastian. So uh, let me see. We have a question uh, from Paula. Well, looks like that disappeared. Uh, let me see if we can get Paula back. Paula, are you available to um, come on? There you are. And unmute and ask your question. Be sure and unmute, unmute yourself so we can hear you. Okay, here we go. It's a very simple question, an easy question. Sebastian, when are you going to be publishing your fifth book? I've read <laughs> all four and I anxiously await for the fifth. I love you, Paula, um, very much. Thank you for that question. That's a question for the editor and the publishers and um, it's going to be quite soon. Everything is ready and it should be really, really uh, soon. Thank you. And I so enjoyed the session. You said words that so spoke to my heart. I wrote them down and I, I have to pass them on because someone, everyone has to let yourself be loved. Do not try to change your humanity. Love everything you are. Embrace who you are. I thank you for those words, Sebastian. They spoke to my heart and my soul. Thank you. Thank you, Paula, for being here and for that wonderful summarize. That, uh, that is exactly the, the call here. Um, to love ourselves so we can love each other and to enjoy the, the, this life, this, mm -hmm. this, uh, this wonder, wonder uh, of life. And the key thing you said is love everything about yourself. Everything. Love your humanity. And I think having gone to, you know, other spiritual uh, readings, like, you know, it's like, you know, unite your body, you know, you hold judgment. But when I read, I love everything about yourself. It makes me feel so much more freer and to know the truth than how completely I am loved by God, and Jesus and Mary and all the angels. So thank you, Sebastian. Thank you for your words. Thank you. Thank you. Paul. Thank you. In fact, uh, we do have the publisher <laughs> in our meeting today, uh, Glenn Hovman, and he just sent me a note saying that book five will be published in a week. So we get uh, <laughs> real, right. real, real time update, real time You're update. You're amazing, Joseph. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank, thank you, Glenn. Uh, okay. Moving right along. Let me see. Um, it looks like we have a question from Linda. So, Linda, let me bring you on and ask if you would uh, turn on your video and unmute, and we will uh, like to hear your question. <clears throat> Hi, Sebastian. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Um, well, it, what does Mother Mary or Jesus or any of the angels uh, or any of them say about asking for help. And uh, there's sort of a second part to that. What about uh, if you have doubts, certain doubts, the mind is saying things that it probably shouldn't, but so what does any, any of, what do any of them say about doubt or um, about asking for help if you would need it <laughs> or want it. Thank you, Linda, for that very important uh, topic. Um, really important topic. I really believe there is a confusion in many places about these topics, um, as you mentioned, Linda, before. Based on my experience and what Jesus and Mary and angels and archangels 
uh, wants is to have a direct relationship with them. They love when we ask for help to them. We are called to ask them everything. We need things. We have needs because we are human. And we have material needs and psychological needs and emotional needs. And not only for us, but for others. So there was a moment in which our Immaculate Mother Mary and also Jesus said to me that as much as I ask them, as much as I grow in trust, because we ask them, because we believe in them, we ask them because we gave all of our life to them. So Jesus said once to me, I become dependent on your trust. As much as you trust me, as much as I can do for you. And there was another moment in which I had a very difficult situation. And I felt during that day that I wasn't receiving the help from Jesus and Mary. And at the end of the day, I received the visitation of Jesus. And I felt like I was abandoned by him. And he he knew my question in my heart, even without me asking for that question. But the question was, why didn't you help me mm-hmm. if I had to give you all my life like a child living in, in the arms of a mother? Why did you abandon me in, in, in that um, difficult situation for me? And he said, because you didn't ask me. And that was true. I forgot to ask him. So we are very accustomed to try to solve our problems in the way we understand things. And based in our understanding from the past. And that's what we have to change. We we are called to give everything in our life to him and to our Immaculate Mother Mary, like a baby in the arms of a mother. And our Immaculate Mother Mary said, babies cry, babies ask for things. Baby doesn't want to um, to receive a no from the mother. So you have the right to ask everything, and I will give you what you ask and more every time you ask. So I encourage you and everyone to ask for help every single minute in your life because that allows us to grow in in having a humble heart like a baby in the arms of a mother. And about that, um, before receiving Choose Only Love, I started to receive for the first time the a mission of writing in 2013, and that is going to be a book which is going to be published in the future, which is called My Dialogue with Jesus and Mary, A Return to Love. In that book, there is a long session about doubt. And Jesus explains very clearly in, in that manifestation that doubts are part of the humanity, of our humanity. Without, because we are humans, and we have to love that, because doubt allows us to have a more flexible way of thinking. If we don't have doubt, he said, you wouldn't have faith. And if you don't have faith, you don't have the benefit of having faith, because faith is extremely important for our spirit. So doubt is welcome, is always welcome because it's part of your humanity. It's no problem with uh, having doubts. Every time that we have doubts or whatever we feel, we embrace that into love and we welcome it. We don't reject anything in our humanity because we know we no longer live by ourselves, but it's Christ who lives in you. So now, Linda who is having that doubt is Christ in you. It's no longer you. So no problem with having that. We love that. 
And you know what? We start to love our conflicts and everything that is not um, perfect in us based on our understanding because um, we are called to love everything. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Linda. That's a, a beautiful answer. Sorry. Uh, I had a couple of questions that uh, came in on our Q&A. Actually, I, there are two. I want to combine them. <laughs> There's uh, one question from Margaret, Margaret Delaney, who, who said, uh, is this second coming you talk about inevitable? regarding the change going on in our world. And then there was another question. I'm going to combine these, take an editor's uh, prerogative here, from Rosemary saying, how do you view evil? And I think in putting those together, there could be a question that as we look around, there appears to be a lot of what we might call evil in the world. Uh, But at the same time, when we think of the second coming, is it inevitable and how would you see it relating to evil and some of the things going on in our world? Thank you for that combination and for those questions. Um, evil, evil is a manifestation of a lack of knowledge. Mm-hmm. When we are living in ignorance, we start doing things that are against love. Evil is everything that is against love. And we do that when we don't know who we are. So every time that we see something that is not love, we can know that that comes from someone or from something that is still not accepting the love that he or she truly is. And that is evil. I believe it's just a lack of knowledge, of knowledge of who we are. We came to this world, to this universe, based on the manifestation that I received from Jesus and Mary, with only one purpose. And the purpose is to answer the question of who we are. And that question has only one answer, because we cannot be many things. We just have to be one thing. And because love is the only thing that exists which is real because God is love and everything that comes from him is love. There is only one quest- way of answering that question. And that, that, that answer is that you are love. I'm love and everything is love. If we live in harmony with that, we are going to manifest that love. But if we reject what we are, we live in a stage of ignorance. If, if ignorance of our identity, and that is evil, simply that. That person will know who they are, and when they accept who they are, they will change, because love changes everything, and the truth and love are together. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from either Frank or Sophia. They're on the same uh, link And so we'll ask them if they would come on, whether it's Frank or Sophia or both, and uh, unmute and ask your question. Um, Am I unmuted now? Yes, and you can turn on your video. We'll get to see you. So it's Sophia. (laughs) It is. And video, where's the video? I don't see my little video. Oh, here it is. Okay. Okay. It's not doing, oh wait. There you are. That's wonderful, Sophia, thank you. Okay, so this is more of a comment, but Sebastian, um, thank you for this opportunity because I found myself, everything that came out of your mouth, I my inside went, yes, he's speaking the truth. And everything, especially, I mean, what you described was a personal relationship with the divine. And, and, and the, the most special thing you said was to ask for wisdom. And, um, you know, it's, I mean, it, it is, it's the truth. Okay. It's the truth. 
Um, however, I have to say, because I, I wrote about this personal relationship in a book, and I'm working on my second book, and there's something not fair that you get all this material. You just get this material, and then, boop, out comes a book, and then another book. I have to sit down in front of the computer. I have to to look at the at the a blank sheet of paper, and I have to put things on paper, and on and on. So. I have to say I'm quite jealous. <laughs> Thank you, Sophia, for that question. I would say uh, to you what um, St. Theresa of Avila said once to me when she came to me in, in, in one of the visitations um, that I usually don't talk about. She said to me that there is a holy envy in our heart that she wants us to uh, be aware of when we feel that we really want to have something that comes from heaven but we don't have that is because there is a launching in our heart of being one with heaven one with god and that launching that desire of being with him comes from christ So I would say to embrace that and to feel absolutely honored for being able to feel that because not everyone can feel such an elevated and holy feeling, the feeling of wanting that, you know, because that's what makes us to jump into the uh, divine dimension because we want that. That happens also to me. Because when I read the St. Teresa of Avila, who is very important for me, I, even when I was young, I said, this is what I want. And I'm not going to stop until I get this, because I see something in that heart, something that is palpable. And I'm not going to accept that this is something from her, but not from me, because we are also human beings. And because I have that desire, I move all of my life into following that desire. And I think it's an honor to feel that. And you know what, Sophia, we always feel that because something that I learned in our direct relationship with God is that we never, never complete our desire of receiving love. As much as we receive, as much as we want. As much as we receive, as much as we want. So there is a space of emptiness, which is an eternal space. So we can receive more and more eternally without satisfying that thirst of being embraced by God. So based on what St. Teresa of Avila said to me is, if you desire love, is because you are love. If you desire holiness, it's because you are holy. So that's, those words are for you today, Sophia. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you so much. We have a question from David. Uh, so David, we'll invite you to... Um, Come on and turn on your video and audio and uh, invite you to have a question. Yes, Sebastian, thank you so much for this talk. It's marvelous. Um, So the question I had related to your early experiences, you mentioned at the beginning of your talk that, and this, I've noted this from other bag from, you know, the early lives of other spiritual figures that, you had the impression growing up, age three, age five, age eight, that other children were experiencing things just like you did, I believe. And then at, certain, and at, at some point you noticed that, that, that there was a difference, that people didn't experience the same thing that you were experiencing by way of your early experiences and so forth. What, at what point did other people start to deviate, if you will, and uh, what can we learn from that? Would you mind repeating your question? I want to make sure that I understood. Yeah, I believe you mentioned that 
in the early part of your talk, you said that as you were growing up, you noticed that there wasn't that you thought that other people had the same experiences that you did as a child with your early spiritual experiences and so forth. And that later on, I, 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 I sort of got the idea that later on you realized that there was a difference between what you were experiencing and what other people were experiencing. Can you say more about that and if that can teach us anything? Thank you, David, for, for that. Uh, and thank you for the clarification. I wanted to make sure that I got the point. Um, I, I'm not that smart to realize that difference on my own. I always grew and live my life with the certainty that this relationship is in everyone. And that is true. There is no difference between me and others. But it was at the age of 43 or 42 years old uh, when Jesus said to me that the relationship that I have with him is not the same as everyone. So it, it wasn't something that I realized by myself. Because I think it's very important to make the following clarification on this topic. We all have the direct relationship with, with God. Every single soul has that relationship, no matter whether that relationship is, is a, a relationship in which you don't talk to him or you just deny him. That's one way of the relationship. We can have a relationship of not talking to someone, but we still have a relationship. So there's no discussion and there's no way of not having um, um, the direct relationship with God. Because if we don't have that direct relationship, we wouldn't exist. There is a constant dialogue between our soul and God. The difference between some person and another person is how they express that relationship. Because we are all different. So we are all having a relationship with God at this moment, even if we denied him. It's, it's, a, it's a way of establishing a relationship. Um, but then you can realize, and we are called to realize that we have that relationship. And once we realize and we become aware of that, which means accepting that, you can change your relationship as you change your relationship with um, anyone with whom you have a relationship. Relationship is everything because life is relationship. We have a relationship with nature. We have a relationship with our body, with our mind and with God and with who we are. And finally, the relationship with God is the relationship with who we are. So the question here is what kind of relationship we have with ourselves and whether we are aware of that relationship or not. Do we think our, about ourselves? Do we give love to ourselves? Do we embrace ourselves? Or we just forget about who we are constantly. And that's the question about who God is. Because God is what you are. And you will have a relationship with God in the same way as you have a relationship with you. Thank you, David. Thank you for that. Okay, I'm going to do one more of my combining of two questions. <laughs> uh, we had a question come in from Susan that says what happens to us after our physical death and Joanne wanted to know uh, as in reincarnation do we keep coming back as until we get it right <laughs> Jesus was very clear with me about what happens 
at that moment that we called death. And I will talk from that revelation. Every single soul that achieves that stage or reach that moment that we call death receives the visitation of Jesus Christ and the soul is going to see him in all his glory in the light of the magnificence of his divine essence and he is going to ask and that's what happens every single moment with each soul that goes to that stage he asks to the soul do you give me your soul and at that moment the eyes of the soul is open and the soul is able to see the infinite mercy of God. And that is the experience of that every, every single soul has at that moment. So death is, based on this revelation, the, the direct encounter with Christ in which the soul listens to the call of Christ asking you do you give me your life? Do you give me your will? Do you give me your soul? And that question actually is the only question that Christ is constantly asking us. He is asking that question right now and we can answer that question right now without waiting more time or wasting time in waiting until that encounter with the divine love. So death is an encounter, is the final encounter with the divine love in which the soul and Christ has this dialogue. However, that dialogue is constantly being manifested in, in our soul, deep in our heart, and we can go to that dialogue right now and make that decision now because we are here to make only one choice and that is only love and that's what we do at that moment. Death is a way of having more understanding and more knowledge of the divine mercy in which we can answer that question with more information. And Talking about the um, the comment of whether we are okay or not, and we reincarnate until we are okay, we are always okay because we come from God. There's no something like being wrong or something like that. If you are wrong, God is wrong, um, and God cannot be wrong because we always do the will of God because the will of God is to be free, to be free to express our will. There's no problem with expressing who we are or who we believe we are, even though we believe we are something different because we are free and it's very important to be free. So something that I learned from Jesus and Mary in my direct relationship is there is no concept of being wrong at all. You are the son or the daughter of God. So you are perfect. And the Holy Spirit said once to me very clearly, always think that your brothers and sisters are perfect because they are perfect because they come from God and God is the source of perfection. So there's no way of not being perfect as you are. Thank you. Well, I think we've um, kind of uh, come to the end of our time. We have people that we couldn't get to everyone. There were some questions and others, but uh, we don't want to overwork our guest. And it feels like uh, such a wonderful time, Sebastian. I almost feel like we're mainlining, mainlining Mary and Jesus 
in being with you because the wisdom that comes through is definitely from the source. And it it's just an honor and a joy to have you sharing that with us. So thank you. Thank you again so much. And we will look forward to having you continue as a part of our center family. And I'm sure we will be seeing you again. So blessings in the time ahead. Blessings on your new books and the things you're working with, with uh, Glenn, the publisher, and others. And I know we look forward to to having having an opportunity to share those. So thank you. Godspeed. And we'll be in touch. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Patricia. And thank you, everyone. Thank you. So we want to, before we close, mention a couple of things. We have our next program coming up. Uh, actually, just in two weeks, the way the timing fell, uh, this next program is only two weeks on June 6, but it will be a great one. It's entitled The Heartbeat of Transition, Sensing the Rhythms of the Soul, and it's with Alan Seal. Uh, he is the founder and director of an organization called the Center for Transformational Presence, and he wants to be talking with us about the transformation going on and asking questions like, what does it mean to live a soul-directed life in a time of global and personal change? So be sure and mark that on your calendar for two weeks from today on June 6th. Also, for those of you who are new, remember that uh, we have a website with lots of videos of past programs and speakers. We have groups in which you can participate and many resources. And remember that we we are a real family, a contemplative community, and uh, if we can be of assistance in supporting you in your journey, feel free to share with us what you're dealing with. And anyone who is so moved is welcome to go to our website and drop something in the virtual collection basket. It is not at all necessary. All our programs are free and open to the public, but we do appreciate the support. So until we meet again, be safe, be well, And remember that whoever you're seeking to become, you already are. Just strip away everything except for love and abide as that love. Namaste.